Hello everyone, and welcome back to Monsters of the Past. As always, I'm your host, Mr. G, and today, I'm here in good old South America to talk about today's subject. It is a very strange pterosaur that goes by the name of... Pterodustro. Pterodustro means Southern Wing, and it was a member of the Tenochasmatai family, I think that's how it's pronounced. It was a carnivore that lived during the early Cretaceous in South America. Pterodustro had a wingspan of around 8 feet long, making it around the size of the current biggest flying animal, the Wandering Albatross. Pterodustro was an interesting discovery for two reasons. One, it was the first pterosaur discovered in South America. But the second, and more important thing, is the fact that its bill had bristles on it, similar to modern-day baleen whales. Because of this, it is basically agreed that Pterodustro is a filter feeder that would scoop up a big mouthful of water and use its bristles to get rid of the seawater while keeping things like tiny invertebrae and plankton in its bill. However, unlike modern day filter feeders, which usually swallow their prey whole, Pterodustro actually had teeth on its upper bill, which seems to indicate that it would have indeed chewed its food, or at the very least would have used its teeth to crush its prey shells. Because of its diet, some scientists think that Pterodustro may have been pink like a flamingo due to the pigmentation in its food. Before I end this segment, I just want to give a brief shout out to another strange South American pterosaur known, by t known as Tapajara. I want to. I mostly wanted to bring it up because most scientists seem to be in agreement that this thing ate fruit. Yeah, a pterosaur that ate fruit. You know, these two animals just go to show that pterosaurs were a lot more varied than pop culture likes to betray them as. I already mentioned how in my Dimorphodon video that pterosaurs are always betrayed as big hulking monsters, and for these two animals, they prove that not all pterosaurs were were giant meat eaters that were that were eagle like hunters. Then again, very few pterosaurs like that in reality, so uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. Alright, let's look at the card. What's this? They actually gave it Pycna fibers! I can actually tell that they gave them them this time! Yay! But Pycna fibers is one thing. How does the rest of the card hold up? Well, it makes a very weird claim in its opening statement where it claims that it would go after large fish even though Pterodustra was definitely a filter feeder and it is definitely hard to imagine this thing trying to eat something like a tuna. But uh, the cards also like to go on about how it had great vision like an eagle but uh, I'm not sure how well that holds up. Also, its wingspan is too short. Its wingspan was 8 feet long, not 4 feet long. It's odd, since usually these cards exaggerate the size of creatures, but here they're doing the opposite. But the biggest error is that it claims that it also lived during the Jurassic era, even though it's only known from the early Cretaceous, and making this an anachronistic error. Because of this, I give this card a 6 out of 10. Now let's look at Pterodustro's very few pop culture appearances. The only two I could find were in Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder and Jurassic World the game. That's all for this episode of Monsters of the Past. Join me next time when I talk about two of the greatest predators the Oligocene ever knew. Bye!